Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifier's tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at the concept of customer lifetime value CLV. Any business selling goods or services wants long-term relationships with its customers rather than uh, one-off transactions as you would imagine. But relationship marketing can cost money and time and businesses need to to often uh, incentivize their customers to stay with them. And incentives can be things like loyalty schemes, discount structures, or even free add-on products or services that businesses offer. But at the end of the day, the company still needs to retain profitability. For this reason, companies should only invest to retain profitable customers. There is no need to retain every single customer. And if a customer's revenue over time exceeds the cost of attracting and retaining that customer, the customer can be considered to be uh, a profitable customer. So you're making more money out of the customer than you're spending in getting and retaining that customer. And it is this difference between the, the revenue generated and the retention costs of a customer is what is called the customer lifetime value, CLV. Now CLV can essentially be used to calculate the amount of revenue a customer can generate over time in future. So it can be a tool used to identify profitable customers to develop relationships with. So this is the primary function of of knowing, learning and understanding what CLV is and how it can be calculated. Now, what is the basic formula for CLV? The basic formula for CLV is customer revenue minus the cost of acquiring and retaining the customer. Now, let's look at a, an extremely simple example. Let's presume that uh, you walk into your local toy shop and buy a toy worth 25 pounds uh, for your nephew and you've been doing this every year for Christmas okay 25 pounds you did that for five years and then you stopped doing it as your nephew uh, grew older now for the shop your lifetime value is 125 pounds so that is 25 multiplied by five because you've only gone there once every year and shopped for that one item now this of course presumes that you, you only walked into the shop as it's close to you and that they don't spend any money on advertising. They didn't spend anything to attract you to the shop. But not every customer journey is this simple. But the basic idea remains the same. It will always remain the same as this very basic example that you have looked at now. Okay? It will always be the total revenue minus the cost of acquiring and retaining a single customer. But the point of calculating CLV is, as I, as I mentioned, is to be able to predict CLV, not to uh, be calculating CL, CLV in hindsight. So we therefore get uh, look, look at a couple of examples now to actually get the concept simplified for you and actually understand how, how predictive uh, CLV can be calculated and how this could actually help any sort of a business, okay? Now let's look at an example. In order to calculate CLV in a, in a practical business situation, uh, we actually firstly need to understand a few concepts, okay? Uh, the first concept we need to understand is uh, called CAC or Customer Acquisition Cost. Now this is the calculated cost for acquiring a single client. OK, uh, for instance, if you are an antivirus company and uh, you've invested one thousand pounds in a month and got 500 new subscriptions as a result of this spend, the acquisition cost will be uh, one thousand divided by five hundred. So that is two pounds. So you have spent uh, two pounds to get one customer. OK, so that is customer acquisition cost. Uh, the next concept is gross margin. Now, this is the average percentage profit margin per sale okay now for example if you go to a local shop uh, uh, sorry if, if a local shop uh, buys a box of tissues for one dollar or one pound 
uh, and sells it for sells it for one pound ten or one dollar and ten uh, ten cents the gross margin is ten percent okay so for people who buy f buys from someone and sells to somebody else uh, it's basically just the money you add on top of your buy price okay you're buying goods from somebody else and you're selling it with a little bit of a profit to somebody else so that's essentially is your gross margin churn now this is a very popular business term and it is essentially the number of cancellations per month or the number of people who stop buying from you or change providers to a different provider to a competitor etc for one reason or another so these are the number of people who who are no longer your customers the number of people who drop off average lifetime so this is the length of time a person typically remains the customer for the business okay now these are some of the important concepts that we use in clv calculation now let's look at the actual uh, calculation through an example now for our calculation let's presume that we are a company that sells clothes online through an e-commerce business through an e-commerce website and let's find out one of the ways we can actually calculate CLV okay now <clears throat> we make a few assumptions here uh, but in a real world situation we would actually look at historic sales records we would actually look at a lot of data yeah and historic sales records would indicate that uh, in this particular example we get around let's presume we get around 600 new clients every month okay and we call this number n now it's important to remember that we are looking at data month on month okay and on an average a client buys 2.5 items okay so 2.5 items are bought every single uh, time so let's call that number i so this means the average transactions per month is actually a multiplication of these two numbers so n into i will be the average transactions per month and in our example it will be 1625 let's call that number t t for tango now our gross margin for most items is uh, at 15 percent okay now let's call that m for mary and historic sales records again indicate that a that a customer on average spends about 20 pounds per transaction and that would be our average spend and let's call that s okay now we've got t we've got m and we've got s and now let's look at what our churn rate is as we understand that's the number of people who drop off let's assume that our churn rate is 20 percent now dividing one by our churn rate would give us the average lifetime per customer but remember that churn rate is a percentage okay so it's effectively one divided by 0.2 and that gives us five so a typical customer stays with us for five months okay now we calculate we now calculate the overall profit over l months which is the the lifetime of a typical customer right so what we do is we multiply t by s by m and this will be our overall monthly profit and then we multiply that by the number of months a customer stays with us which is l and this brings us to the number 24375 in our example now remember that uh, gross margin is a percentage okay so the value uh, to be multiplied with will be 0.15 and not 15 next we divide this number by the number of customers we get uh, to get the number 37.5 so 37.5 pounds so this is the amount of profit we make per customer in our example okay now since clv is the amount of money you make per customer minus the cost of acquiring that customer uh, we now know that the amount of actual profit we make per customer is 37.5 right so clv will be 37.5 minus 
the customer acquisition cost or CAC which we have looked at uh, previously and we will look at it again to understand it further. So it's essentially 37.5 minus CAC in our example. So for CLV to be positive and for customers to be worthy of our money and time, we need to have we need to be spending less than 37.5 pounds in acquiring each customer you know, and also in, in retaining each customer. Otherwise, the CLV will be negative and uh, all we will all, all we'll have would be unprofitable customers. Okay, now let's look at customer acquisition in detail, CAC. So as we know, new customers can be acquired through different avenues. Companies, companies can do various things like providing uh, referral bonuses, discounts for first-time buyers, discounts for, for repeat customers. Uh, well, sorry, a discount for repeat customers would not be for new customers anyway. So discount for first-time buyers. They could send out mail shots to a selected number of people, uh, which can also be called email marketing. They could spend money on SEO, which is search engine optimization, which is ensuring that your website ranks up well in Google and other search engines. Or they could use Google Ads, which is a very popular advertising uh, campaign management of, uh, system. Uh, the important factor to understand for businesses is whether the combination of these marketing activities cost them more money per customer than an average customer can bring in, okay? And the way the customer acquisition costs are calculated will, will vary from company to company and will, will entirely depend on what marketing activities they pursue, obviously. But the important factor in achieving profitability is to keep a tab on the marketing costs and tie it in with the revenue generated. That is the, ext that is the most important factor to understand uh, and to, to learn from this exercise. And the model will work differently for different companies, of course. Uh, for instance, a company like Starbucks might make about eight pounds revenue for, per, per customer and can have a very high volume of customers. And if we consider uh, the division of a company like IBM, for instance, that provides enterprise-wide IT solutions, uh, a single client could account for more than a million pounds worth of pure revenue after taking all, all of the costs out of the equation. So as you can see, the, the considerations can become quite different depending on what your company actually does. Now let's look at another example. Now in this example, we consider the prime division of Amazon. Now based on where you are, Amazon charges you around, uh, around eight pounds a month, I would say. And if you decide to pay annually instead of monthly, this can actually be reduced further, as most of you would know. Uh, but does this mean that Amazon cannot spend more than 8 into 12, which is 96 pounds a year, on getting a new customer or retaining a customer? No, it doesn't mean that. Uh, now, let's assume that an average Prime subscriber stays on board for two years, uh, which is 24 months. So... If they have spent £150, uh, which is more than 96 on acquiring this customer, uh, they might lose a bit of money uh, on that customer in the first year, but the customer in his 24-month uh, uh, duration would have spent uh, £192 directly on Prime Videos on the subscription itself, uh, and then not to mention there could be other purchases made by the same customer, uh, because it's a two-year duration that we're talking about and he could uh, buy new rental movies, on-demand movies, on-demand shows. He could purchase products because of uh, Prime's next uh, next day delivery uh, promise, etc. So, again, it is all dependent on how long a customer is retained by, by Amazon and then where he wishes to spend and how much money he wishes to spend. It is therefore... Uh, important for companies like Amazon to keep a tab on their churn rate, retain customers and get new ones, even if they spend more than the annual CLV on a typical customer. But 
As I mentioned previously, the important factor here is the business model. Now, e-commerce companies with subscription models and repeat business can actually benefit greatly, as we have just seen, from understanding CLV and, and, and keeping the marketing budget tight. Uh, companies, there, there can be other companies, you know, which can provide enterprise-wide IT solutions or can work on, uh, on large government infrastructure contracts and will always find it profitable to, f to spend a fair amount of money in acquiring clients and contracts and go all out to retain such customers because a single customer can actually add a lot of revenue to the business, essentially. They'll hire dedicated account managers and even provide uh, their services at a lower profit margin to, re to, uh, to actually retain such customers. And it is quite logical for them to do so. The critical factors for all businesses as a result of all this uh, would be to always maintain customer profiles, always monitor sales patterns and to map customer journeys. Okay, and doing all of this will provide the company the required business intelligence to then make informed decisions on how much to spend on, on marketing, which customers to, uh, to emphasize, which customers to spend more money on, and then how much budget to allocate okay so as always i thank you very much for your attendance and hope that the concept of clv was simplified enough for you and if you're new year here uh, i would uh, encourage you to subscribe to this channel like this content and uh, the other tutorials in this channel and as always, take very good care of yourself and your families. Thank you very much.